Hey, this is what you call lunch, woman? Step up your game. Excuse me? There's no protein in this crap. Can't you understand that I need my precious meat? It's like you don't even listen to a word I say. I keep reminding you over and over about my carb and protein needs, but it's like talking to a wall. How many times do I have to repeat myself? This pathetic PB&J sandwich doesn't do jack for me. Get it together, will you? Yeah, but Edward, we can't afford the way you want to eat. Do you not understand that? What the hell are you blabbering about? I give you an allowance every month specifically for food, so we can eat the way I want and live up to my standards. Are you for real? The $150 budget you think is enough for our groceries? Even if it was just you and me, it wouldn't cut it. And hello, we have a little one to take care of. Did that slip your mind too? Plus, he's starting to eat a lot. I need you to give us a bigger budget for our food. Are you freaking kidding me right now? It's your responsibility as a housewife to manage the budget I give you. Being a housewife is like a walk in the park, the easiest thing ever, and you can't even handle that properly? And let's not forget, you don't even work. So, it's about time you start pulling your weight and stop making excuses. I can't believe you're even saying this. I married you to make my life easier, not harder. You're a complete failure as a wife. You can't budget, you don't listen, my lunches are garbage. You're useless. I've been telling you over and over that I want to go to work. I'd much rather find a sitter for Martin after school and get a job, so we can bring in some extra cash. Did you conveniently forget that? I never said I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. There's no chance you're going to work. I've always said a wife's place is in the house taking care of the family. That's your job. I'm not letting you go to work and abandon your household responsibilities. I mean, what's it going to look like to everyone? It's going to make me look bad. People talk, you know. Why should we care about what other people say? You only bring home a measly $1,500 a month. Wow, you're just beyond ungrateful. Can't believe you're whining about my salary, Vanessa. Last time I checked, you don't pay for a damn thing. You're just sponging off me and have the nerve to complain that I'm not bringing in enough. You're nothing but a disgrace. Of course, I appreciate that you're working hard for us. I'm not trying to complain about your salary, but let's be real here. It's just $1,500 a month. You have to admit that supporting three people on that amount can be challenging. I just want us to acknowledge the situation we're in. Oh, please. I'm already giving you more than you could possibly need. There should be a surplus of everything, way beyond what's necessary for all of us. We've got our child starting at a new school soon, and that means we've got admissions and tuition fees to deal with. Let's face it, $1,500 a month just won't cover it. Let me step in and help out. Let me go find a job and contribute to our finances. No freaking way! My mom said my salary is more than sufficient for our family. If you think we're running short, that's your problem. You're just terrible at budgeting and blowing it all on that junk you smear in your face. Your mom's opinion is what you're going with? Come on, she's living in the past. We're in 2024 now and things have changed. I should know, considering I handle everything around the house. I do the shopping, make the payments, and take care of all the responsibilities. So let's not rely on outdated advice from your mom, all right? Hey, listen up. I've had it up to here with your idiotic whining and constant complaints. It's all I ever hear, day in and day out. You're just a lousy housewife who can't even manage to take care of the house properly. If this were a company, I would have fired your sorry self ages ago. The truth is, you're so dumb and lazy that you can't survive without my help or salary. Deal with it. What? You have some nerve calling me dumb and lazy. If you want me to stop calling you that, then learn something from my mom. Stop being so lazy and just shut up and be a good wife. Hi, Vanessa. I heard about your conversation with Edward. I heard you said some things you just could never take back. He's very hurt, you know. I heard you told him he wasn't making enough money. Well, yeah, I did tell him that, but not in those exact words. How could you even say that? Unlike you, he is working his butt off to provide for you and my grandchild. You spend your day at home. That's not something you say to your husband. I did feel a bit bad after I said that, but the reality is that our family cannot survive on his current salary. So please, Catherine, I'd appreciate it if you could talk to your son. He just doesn't listen to me. I'm not asking him to change anything. I'm asking him to let me go to work so I can also help out financially. Of course that's not even an option. 
You need to be supporting your husband at home. That's your job. Supporting the family at home so Edward can concentrate on his work. You also shouldn't have to worry about the money. You let him worry about that part. Listen, Catherine, times are different now. Things are expensive now and not like it was back in the day. Taxes are higher, rent is higher. Both women and men work now, not just the husbands. You know how much we get a month, right? After taxes and everything, it's $1,500 a month. Doesn't that worry you? Your grandson won't be able to get a good education. The issue isn't what Edward brings home. The issue is your budgeting and spending. Of course. I am making every effort to keep our costs down. I'm only spending $150 a month on food. That's unheard of these days. From where I'm sitting, it looks like there's a lot more you can do. You can learn a lot from me, you know, Vanessa. Edward tells me everything, you know. Just the other day, he told me you went to the hair salon. Well, yeah, I can't cut it myself, so haircuts for all of us is a necessity. I only go once every three months when a lot of people go once a month. Yep, and there you go. Get pampered, get your hair done. At the end, you pay them and also tip them? Well, yeah, that's what you do when you go to a salon. You get a service done and you pay them. That's how the economy works. Now you listen to me. From now on, you're going to my sister's salon. She'll cut your hair for free. I'll let her know that you'll come by next time. Uh... I also heard you have expenses at the dentist as well. For our regular checkups and cleaning once every six months or so, yes. It's cheaper to go to the checkups than to have to get them fixed once it's too late. You should go to the dentist my cousin works at. He does their accounting for them. If you tell them you're my daughter-in-law, they should do it for free. Um... And leave the food up to me. Our neighbor owns a farm. He has a ton of stuff left over that he can't distribute. So I'll ask him to give us whatever he's getting rid of. I really don't need your help with that. Don't worry, just leave it up to me. I also have a bunch of friends who own bakeries, cafes, and restaurants. I can ask them all for their leftovers that they can't sell. You should be able to save a whole ton. I'm serious. I really don't need your help. I appreciate you offering your help, but we can handle this on our own. Everything you just mentioned, the salon, the dentist, and all the food, this is all stuff we should be paying for, so it's all budgeted. Asking for everything for free from people just doesn't feel right. I really can't do that. I don't want to do that. I don't see what's wrong with any of it. It's about asking for help and getting as many things as possible for free whenever possible. I don't think what you're asking me to do is called helping each other. It's totally fine. I don't understand why you're so worried about it. You just need to follow exactly what I've been doing and learn from the best. I've been doing this way longer than you have. Let me tell you something. Once I saved over $35,000 in just one year. Can you believe it? 35 k In one year? That is pretty impressive. Okay, so we're on the same page now. I will contact everyone and get things in place. Just let me and everyone else help you. Your life will be so much easier that way. Yo, Vanessa. My mom just called. She's sending us some boxes or something? What? What boxes? You're a complete failure when it comes to budgeting for the house. So she's asked all our friends and relatives for help and got a bunch of stuff for us. You should call her later and thank her. Listen, can you please tell her to stop? I asked her not to do this. I told her we didn't need her help. She won't listen to me, but maybe she'll listen to you. Why would we want her to stop helping us? Just because you can't ask people for help doesn't mean she shouldn't either. You should be grateful for her help. She's really gone out on a limb for us, you know? And everyone's willing to help out. Grateful? Are you kidding me? Helping us out? This isn't called help. How are they supposed to say no to someone who is pushy and demanding? Everyone else pays for everything. That's the normal and respectful thing to do. But asking for all of those things for free? We're completely disrespecting them and what they do. This isn't right at all. I don't want to accept any of that. So please, tell your mom to stop meddling. Who are we disrespecting? I don't get it. This is called asking for help, and it's normal. People help each other all the time. Everything is going to waste anyway, so we're actually doing them a favor. You get it? Well, the truth is, your mom is going around telling them that everything is going to waste, so she will take them off their hands. See, this is where you and I are totally different. They're willingly giving it to us for free, so why would we be disrespectful and throw it right back in their face? Anyway, I totally forgot to tell you. I found out that my friend's wife is a nail artist. Yeah, and? I told him about it, so you should give her a call and get her to do it for you for free. Isn't that awesome? You don't have to pay to get your nails done anymore. Are you joking? 
You asked him to get his wife to do my nails for free? Of course I did. Such a waste of money. Friends and family should always get a discount. So a reminder of that when you're there. What you're doing isn't called a discount. You're just being rude and squeezing everything out of everyone for whatever they've got. You don't do that to friends or family. Please tell your friend and his wife that I won't be needing my nails done. If I do, I will call her and set up an appointment and pay her properly like everyone else does. Please also apologize for even asking them to do it for free and let them know you shouldn't have. Oh, so now you're trying to make me the bad guy, huh? I went above and beyond for you, taking risks and making things happen. I thought you were into this kind of lifestyle, and I did it all for you. Frankly, I don't think you're in any position to tell me what to do. You're a complete failure when it comes to being a decent wife. All you do is spend, 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 without a clue on how to manage our finances properly. Asking people to do things for free isn't budgeting either. It's just rude. You and your mom are so unbelievably selfish. I can't believe you two. You have no right to complain about us. If you're going to continue being this difficult, then you should leave. Get out of my house. You're a total waste of my time and money. Have you lost your mind? You've always had this holier-than-thou attitude. Maybe you need to check yourself. Let me remind you, Vanessa. You're just a housewife. The same as an unemployed slacker. Maybe getting thrown out will finally make you realize how good you had it. Whatever you say. Okay then, get out. Guarantee you'll regret it. You'll realize what a failure you are. Make sure you don't come back until you find some gratitude towards what I provided for you all these years. Vanessa, you ready to come home? You better come home. Get home now. Excuse me? I'm sure you've learned your lesson by now. Stop being so stubborn and get your butt home now. Learned my lesson? What lesson are you talking about? I'm not coming home, Edward. I'm taking full custody of our child and I'm leaving you. Oh, don't give me that crap. You both need to come home now. You've left such a mess over here. You need to get your butt back right now. Um, what? What mess? Some of our friends and relatives have been cutting ties with me, telling me that if you left, they have no reason to stay friendly. They want nothing to do with me. They've all blocked me. One guy even came to the house and literally spat in my face. Oh, wow. <laughs> what are you going around telling people? They all started dropping like flies, and I'm sure you had something to do with it. Otherwise, why would they treat us like this? You really have no idea, do you? You two mooch off everything and everyone. You're like blood-sucking leeches. You dug your own deep grave and now you're blaming me? I am so not surprised. Who are you calling a blood-sucking leech? I haven't said a single thing to any of your friends. I have no relationship with any of your friends or relatives. The only time I spoke to them was when I went to pay them back for everything you two mooched off everyone. Wait a minute. What? You paid them back? Yeah, of course I paid them back. The dentist, the hair salon, the relative that runs the restaurant, the farmer who gave us those amazing veggies. Oh, and your friend that owns the cafe. Your friend's wife, the nail technician. Everyone. I told you I didn't pay, but called them after and immediately went to pay them back. Do you know how time-consuming that was? All the while taking care of our child because you're never any help. What? Why would you pay them for something they gave us for free? That's our right as friends and family. That's where you're wrong. You were forcing them to give us all that stuff for free. They weren't doing it out of the kindness of their hearts. When I went to pay them back, they were all so grateful. They all told me they had no idea why I was married to you and how I even dealt with your mom. You're lying! They also told me exactly the opposite of what you told me. They said that they told you no multiple times. But you kept pushing and pushing and pushing. When they wouldn't say yes and help you out, you just took whatever they had like thieves. They also all said that they didn't want anything to do with you, but they either see what work or family events, so they didn't want to make it awkward. They said that to you? Unbelievable! You keep on saying friends and family, but are you serious? It's a one-way street with you two. You've never helped one of them when they needed your help. That's the textbook definition of mooching off of people. And you expected me to do the same? Are you kidding me? Embarrass myself like that? No thank you. You really have some nerve calling us that. Shut up with that nonsense. You're the one who's talking nonsense. That's why people want nothing to do with you. You two have zero common sense or any sort of kindness or gratitude towards others. You're just beyond selfish. No common sense? Selfish? 
No gratitude or kindness? Are you freaking kidding me? Unlike you, I don't take people's money for nothing. Yeah, okay. Whatever you say. See ya. Vanessa! Edward told me everything you said to him. He said you told everyone some blatant lie and now none of our friends or our relatives want anything to do with us. Actually, that's not true at all. It's your own fault. Your and your son's. You're just trying to blame your own faults on someone else, as always. They just couldn't take your mooching off of them any longer. They got tired of being bullied by you two. Shut up, you useless piece of garbage. You need to undo what you did and make it right. Well, I can't do anything about it because I didn't do anything. If you want to do something about it, why don't you go and apologize and start paying all of them for what they are worth? Why would we pay them for something they offered us for free? It's just rude! Helping friends and family is a given. You help each other out. I don't think what you're asking them to do is called helping each other out. If they gave you a service or a product, even if they are a friend or family, you're a customer. Maybe they might give you a slight discount, but paying them is the right thing to do. Not guilting them into giving you everything for free. Don't talk to me like this. You've got a lot of nerve. It's just the facts, Catherine. It's different if they insist on giving you something for free, but demanding you get it for free is beyond rude. And on top of that, so disrespectful. I already told Edward, but I will also tell you too for your own good. That's called mooching, and people in general don't like people who mooch off of them. You're telling us we're mooching off of our own friends and family? You have no common sense whatsoever, do you? Oh, and I forgot to tell you. I remembered you told me that you saved 30k in one year once. I'm assuming that was thanks to all your mooching off of friends and relatives. I thought they all deserved to know, because they were the ones that made it possible. Why would you do that? They all said that same thing since you saved so much. You may receive invoices from them for all the services and products you took from them. Oh, and someone else also said that they were going to ask you to pay them back all the money they lent you in one big lump sum payment. They sounded serious. Are you kidding me? Apparently, I didn't know this, but you weren't just mooching off of them. You were also borrowing money from them too. They said you said family should never charge interest to family nor should they expect the money back in a certain amount of time. Unbelievable! Um, that... actually, that was. If you believe that friends and family should really help each other out, then you should pay back each and every one of them. Because in the end, that's all they want. They just want their money back. So, you should really do that. Isn't that the right thing to do, Catherine? Hi, Vanessa. Please come home. Please, we've really thought about what we've done. We will never push anyone into giving us things for free ever again. Yeah, I'm not coming home. It's all too late, really. There's no fixing anything. You've always been so stubborn. In all seriousness, though, do you really want to be a single mom? I don't think so, right? You have no skills. No one will hire you. It's going to be super hard on your own. So just come home. I'm not angry anymore. I've let it all go. So stop being stubborn and come back. Actually, I have a job. I'm making as much as you are already. What? No one told me this. $1,500 a month isn't that hard to make, I realized. Even for a stay-at-home mom like me who hasn't been working for the past several years. Oh, and that's before my overtime, too. There's no way you're making the same amount as I am. What a joke. Who would hire a useless housewife with no skills? There's no way anyone would hire you. It's such a waste of money. Actually, I was surprised too. I got so many job offers. What? All your friends and family were so supportive. They all heard that I moved out, and I'm not really sure where they heard it from, but they called me immediately. They all said that they were happy to hire me at their businesses. They also offered to refer me to different companies that were hiring as well. What? I don't believe this. No one told me any of this. I was just losing all my confidence and wasn't sure where to go. I'm so grateful for their help. They were giving me a chance to get back on my feet, so I decided to accept one of the offers. They were really so understanding of my situation, so they helped me get into their corporate housing until I get back on my feet. Can you believe it? It's just me and Martin, so it's super spacious and comfy, too. This is unbelievable! I mean, don't get me wrong here. I haven't expected anything for free, and I thank each and every person that has helped me. I also realize that I have a lot more skills than I thought. I really didn't give myself enough credit. And my boss is so happy with me. They tell me all the time how grateful they are that they have me. Who's your boss? Where are you working? Who referred you? 
I'm coming to get you now. Tell me your address. Yeah, I'm not that dumb. I've decided that I want a divorce, so I'll get the process started. I really hope you don't make it difficult. My lawyers will send you everything to sign once everything is ready. A divorce? There's no way I'm signing anything. I'm not changing my mind. I've already saved some money and I'm happy. Martin is happy too. I spoke to him about you not living with us anymore. He seemed fine with it. I can finally say that I'm happy and I can finally hold my head up high and stick up for myself. You think it's that easy to just leave? If you think that, then you have another thing coming. A divorce? Are you joking with me? You don't get to decide who leaves and when. Tell me your address now. I need to talk some sense into you. You've completely lost your mind. Yeah, well, come find me if you can, because there's no way I'm giving you my address. And if you come to my worker home, I've made arrangements already. Everyone will be notified. They'll all come rushing over to help me out and protect me from your madness. You're being completely unreasonable. Everyone has become such close friends and so protective over Martin and I. They said if either one of you contact us or come near us to let them know ASAP. They said that they would help me get rid of you guys. <laughs> Why would our friends and relatives be on your side? You're nothing to them. This must be a joke. Well, you should really think long and hard about that. Okay, so next weekend, there are a few final things I need to pick up from the house. So I'll be by with some friends to pick those all up. And from here on, my lawyers will be in touch to get the ball rolling on finalizing our divorce. Please tell your mom I said hello and that I wish her the best. The following weekend, I gathered some friends and headed over to collect my belongings. Thankfully, I was able to retrieve everything I needed. While we were there, Edward's relatives unexpectedly arrived to present invoices for past services and products, insisting on immediate payment. They also demanded the return of all the money they loaned Edward's mom. Reluctantly, his mom arrived with a full amount to settle the debts. Naturally, they wasted no time in blaming me for their financial woes, claiming that their entire savings had vanished because of me. Thankfully, the lawyers handled all the necessary paperwork, and Edward finally signed the divorce papers. I recently learned that he now resides with his mom. Apparently, she's become frustrated with his meager $1,500 monthly salary and constantly urges him to find ways to earn more money. It seems their strained relationship has left her perpetually angry with him. With no more friends or relatives to rely on, I heard they are now surviving on canned beans.